This video teaches the major mechanisms controlling arterial blood pressure. These are important physiological concepts. Also, these concepts are going to be important when you learn about disease. For example, these mechanisms are going to be particularly important in understanding the etiology and the treatments for hypertension and heart failure. Also, in understanding how the body responds to different types of shock. Blood pressure is controlled via a number of homeostatic mechanisms. The word homeostasis refers to the maintenance of a stable physiological state or a stable constancy of internal environment. Of course, nothing is perfectly stable or constant in biology. Things tend to fluctuate around. So really a better definition may be to think of homeostasis as um, about how physiological systems respond to and control fluctuations. A key concept in all of biology and particularly important when we think about homeostatic systems and physiology is negative feedback control. So an example of a neg negative feedback control that might be familiar to you is what you're doing when you're driving a car and trying to maintain a constant speed. So imagine for example you want your car to go at the constant speed of 60 miles an hour. So we could call 60 the set point. That's how fast we want to go. So if your speed is actually a little bit less than 60, you need to give a little bit more gas to speed up. And so here's the negative feedback part uh, in, uh, in this conceptual diagram. If your speed is say 58, okay, a little bit less than the set point, we look at the difference between the set point and the current speed, that's plus two. Not so far off, but the positive signal is to, comes from that positive two. The signal is apply more gas, okay? The positive signal comes from being at, at a negative speed compared to the set point. In the opposite situation, you're going a bit over 60, let's say 62. The negative feedback comparison says that since the speed is greater than the set point, a negative signal goes to the gas to make the car slow down. So all sorts of negative feedback systems like this operate in the body. So if glucose in the plasma is too high, it initiates a signal to beta cells to start releasing insulin uh, that works elsewhere in the body to take up that insulin and, for example, uh, to take up that glucose, sorry, um, and then make glycogen out of, out of the glucose, okay? The, um, the endocrine system is full of negative feedback loops like that, okay? Uh, and multiple feedback loops are controlling blood pressure. So as, as an overview, here is a list of the major players in arterial blood pressure control. The real biggies are what we're going to go over here um, are the baroreflex and the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. One point that I want to make is that in physiological systems, there's no simple single set point for control purposes. Okay, so in the car speed example that we just talked about, there was a set point, the target speed. Another example, you can set the thermostat in your house or apartment to a target temperature. That's a set point, right? In blood pressure control, there's no equivalent of a thermostat where the arterial pressure is set. In fact, all of these systems sense different things that are related to pressure, um, and ha all, they all have efforts that influence pressure in different ways. Okay? The first one on this list is the autonomic baroreflex. So sensors in certain large arteries sense the stretching of the arteries. Um, the outputs of the baroreflex system are the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous outputs, which influence vascular tone, heart rate, and cardiac contractility. So there's a feedback loop for you from pressure, which changes the stretch in your arteries, and then sends a signal back to influence the pressure through influencing the vasculature in the heart. Okay? The renin-angiotensin system, the primary input of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system is the stretch or distension of small afferent arterioles in the kidney. So hormones upregulated or depressed by this system regulate renal water and sodium excretion. Okay, so by the way, a couple of vocabulary words down here for you. Diuresis means the production of urine. Naturesis means the excretion of sodium via the urine. And sometimes people talk about the pressure diuresis and the pressure naturesis relationship. So those are the relationships between arterial pressure and urine volume and, and sodium output. So other players that we're going to hear about are antidiuretic hormone or ADH and naturetic peptides. Okay, and there's that, that root word again, nat naturesis. How does the barrel reflex work? Okay, so there are sensors made up of nervous tissue in the aortic arch and in the carotid sinus. These sensors, called the afferent baroreceptors, fire when the vessels are stretched, like 
what happens in systole. They stop firing when the vessel is react, re relaxing, like in diastole. So if you stretch them a lot, you get a lot of firing. If they don't stretch much, not so much firing. So an increase in stretch leads to an increasing in afferent firing rate. And that signal makes its way to a part of the brainstem called the nucleus tractus solitaris, or NTS here, which responds to that input by increasing parasympathetic tone, which has the effect of lowering heart rate and contractility. So that increase in firing also has the effect of reducing sympathetic firing to blood vessels in the heart. So that relaxes the blood vessel, also reduces the heart rate and the contractility. So an increase in arterial pressure increases stretch at the arterial afferent sensors, causing a depression in vessel tone, heart rate, and contractility. And there's that negative feedback system, right? Um, and you can reverse all of these arrows. So if afferent firing rate were to go down, what would that do? That would depress parasympathetic and increase sympathetic firing rate, leading to an increase in arterial pressure. On the effector side, okay, so the, the output of, of this control system, the outputs from the sympathetic and the parasympathetic stimuli. So we have chronotropic and inotropic effects on the heart. Remember, chronotropic means affecting heart rate, which normally is controlled by the sinoatrial node. So if, if you watch the video on electrophysiology, you may remember that stimulation of cholinergic receptors leads to a hyperpolarization and slow depolarization of the SA node, slowing the heartbeat. So stimulation of beta adrenergic receptors increases the, the, increases the depolarizing current, speeding things up. Okay, so these signals also affect the myocardium via an inotropic effect. They affect contractility, and they do that by affecting calcium handling in the cardiomyocytes. So remember, beta stimulation increases protein kinase A, PKA activity. PKA phosphorylates phospho phospholamban, which takes away its inhib the inhibition of, of um, the phosphorylated phosph phospholamban, takes takes away, phosphorylation of phospholamban takes away its inhibition of circa. That leads to a bigger calcium transients, faster calcium decrease in diastole, higher calcium peaks in, in systole. So this, then that, that's all review from the electrophysiology and calcium handling video. Okay, what about the vessels? So vascular smooth muscle responds to adrenergic stimulation through alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptors. So alpha-1 receptors are G protein coupled receptors. Uh, this particular one activates a protein called phospholipase C. Phospholipase C produces inositol triphosphate or IP3. So IP3 binds to something called an IP3 receptor, that makes sense, which is calcium channel. Activated IP3 receptors let calcium out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, uh, the SR, and thus they increase contraction. Activation of alpha 2 receptors which are coupled to GI proteins, okay? So the I is for inhibitory, decrease or um, inhibit adenylate cyclase activity, decreasing cyclic AMP concentration. So de decreased cyclic AMP uh, leads to higher contraction. So the mechanisms, not the full mechanism details aren't shown in this picture, but the mechanism is that cyclic AMP inhibits another kinase called myosin light chain kinase, okay? So the mechanism of via the alpha-2 receptors is that alpha-2 stimulation reduces cyclic AMP, which reduces the inhibition of myosin light chain C kinase, which leads to greater contraction. So compare that mechanism to beta stimulation of the cardiomyocyte. So remember, downstream of the beta receptor in the cardiomyocyte, we have an increase in cyclic AMP. Okay, and it turns out that some smooth muscle, vascular smooth muscle cells have beta receptors that do the same thing. So in particular in the heart, in the coronary circulation, beta-mediated signaling causes vasodilation. And you can imagine that's important. So if your heart is facing an increase in adrenergic stimulation, it's beating faster, it's, it's, it's contracting more strongly, you want the blood vessels that, that supply it with oxygen to dilate, not to constrict. Okay, but throughout most of the body, not the heart, alpha-mediated constriction dominates. Okay, and that constriction can be activated by neurotransmission from a neuromuscular junction or from circulating epinephrine or norepinephrine. Okay, so um, alpha receptors on this smooth muscle cause constriction. What would an alpha blocker like phentolamine do? Okay, so you, 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 alpha blockers block constriction, alpha blockers are vasodilators.
Okay, quick summary of what we've learned so far. This is a nice diagram summarizing the baroreflex effects on the cardiovascular system. It might help you to review the concepts by pausing for a minute, copying this out. That's one thing, one way I like to learn things is redrawing them myself, okay, and asking yourself, do you understand all of these steps here, okay? Uh, this is also turning out to be kind of a long video, so it might be a good time to pause, go have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, come back after a quick break if you want. Moving on, let's look for other efferent targets of the sympathetic nervous outflow. Um, and that leads us right to the kidney. Uh, there are small resistance arterioles in the kidney that control pressure and flow into the glomeruli downstream of those arterioles. So um, this, there's cells on those arterioles called juxtaglomerular cells. They're also called granular cells. They sit right on those afferent arterioles. They're called granular cells because they have little granules of a protein called renin, uh, which can be released into the bloodstream. Release of renin is activated by sympathetic stimulation of those cells also via a decreased stretch of the arterial. So a drop in blood pressure um, will have an effect through the sympathetic nervous system, um, uh, through the autonomic uh, uh, baroreflex, it will also have a direct effect on these cells, okay? Um, and you can see both of those effects in this diagram. So we'll leave this other mechanism uh, to when you study the kidney in more depth, but you can see the sympathetic stimulation and, 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 the, and the stretch or, or um, lack of stretch mediated release, right? So sympathetic stimulation of the adrenals also leads to an increase in release of um, catecholamines into the bloodstream. Uh, the point here uh, is to show you that the autonomic response of the baroreflex is acting not just on the heart and on the blood vessels, but also on these endocrine systems. So in those guys from the previous slide are all players in the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. So first off, what does renin do? So renin, through a series of steps, not shown in detail here, leads to activation of angiotensin II, which is another circulating hormone. And what do you think angiotensin II does? So I think you've probably heard the prefix before angio. Angio means having to do with vessels. Tensin sounds like tension. Um, and angiotensin constricts vessels. Makes sense. And as you've already learned, a drop in pressure leads to a um, an increase in sympathetic tone, which increases vascular constriction. So that decrease in pressure, as well as the increase in sympathetic tone, both act to increase activity of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, which in turn also causes vasoconstriction. So constriction of, constriction of vessels in the kidney leads to less filtration, um, and that is ultimately less urine production. Angiotensin II also tells the kidney to reabsorb more sodium and more water during urine for formation. That leads to retention of more sodium and more volume. It also stimulates aldosterone production, which also has the effect on the kidneys of telling them to retain salt and water. So all of these things, sympathetic drive, vessel tone, volume retention, all lead to an increase in pressure in response to decreased pressure as the input here on the left on this diagram. Uh, we've also got a new thing in this picture, ANP. So ANP stands for atrial natriuretic peptide, which is another hormone. Natriuretic peptides, um, and there's another one that you'll hear about called brain natriuretic peptides. Um, these peptides are released from a few, few places in the body. One of the important places is the atria. They're released from atria in response to increased stretch. So they sort of sense uh, venous pressure and venous volume. And the feedback loop here is that an increase in venous pressure or volume leads to a production in um, natriuretic peptides. And these natriuretic peptides act directly on vessels that cause vasodilation, and they inhibit the renin angiotensin system. So here, back to that, that um, diagram with, with the natriuretic peptides down here, um, and I've also added a new pathway. Sympathetic drive tells the hypothalamus to produce antidiuretic hormone. That's one of the, the inputs to um, the hypothalamus for production of, of ADH. Uh, and that will also make you thirsty. It also stimulates the kidneys to hang on to water by reabsorbing it from the filtrate, okay? Uh, down here, same stuff, but all the arrows are reversed because we're starting with an increase in pressure. Now, one final slide. Uh, 
Um, and you should have a feeling for this big picture and how these different pathways all work together. And you've also learned what's inside each of these boxes. So for example, how car cardiac contractility is modulated by adrenergic versus cholinergic stimulation. You know how the SA node is stimulated by the same things affecting heart rate. You know how alpha mediated signaling causes vascular smooth muscle constriction and so on. There's a lot going on here um, from, from this lecture in some of these boxes we talked about in um, a, a previous lecture on um, electrophysiology and calcium handling in, in, in the myocardium. Thanks for listening.